Section 8. Addressing hyperprolactinemia and sexual side effects from antipsychotic use. Elevated prolactin levels are the result of dopamine blockade in the tuberoinfundibular pathway. When I went to medical school, there was a so-called prolactin inhibiting factor, or PIF, describing the tonic inhibition of prolactin release. Turns out to be dopamine. So dopamine is PIF, and as a result, if we block dopamine, we remove this inhibiting factor and prolactin goes up. There are gender-specific problems that you see. Females have, in general, actually higher prolactin elevations in response to dopamine blockade. The female side effects are secondary, amenorrhea, infertility, gynecomastia, and galacteria, and loss of libido. The male side effects are loss of libido and erectile dysfunction, in addition to also gynecomastia and galacteria. The long-term effects from increased prolactin levels are really due to the secondary hypogonadism that you may see, which could lead to osteoporosis and increase the patient's risk for fractures. There's possibly an increased breast cancer risk, although this has not been proven, and there's a suggestion that uh, the endometrial cancer risk may not be increased, but uh, similarly, I think the jury is out, so there may be some long-term cancer risks related to uh, hypogonadism. How do you approach elevated prolactin levels? I think this is an example where shared decision-making is really critical because some people may just be okay and have no problems from living with them elevated prolactin levels, whereas others may be quite concerned about possible long-term risks. I usually check prolactin at the beginning of treatment and then at some later point just to see if it's elevated or not. Then you have to decide with the patient if it's elevated, whether to send them to endocrinology or to do serial prolactin levels to establish that the level is not increasing like you would see in a prolactinoma, which is your main concern. I think if somebody has an elevated prolactin level on a typical dose of risperidone, I would be okay with doing serial prolactin levels. But if the level is rather high, I would probably send them to endocrinology. So what would you do? You can either stay the course, you could switch to a prolactin-sparing antipsychotic, or you could add eripiprazole, which is a very effective strategy and may be worthwhile for people who are on long-acting injectables that you don't really want to change. There are some so-called prolactin-sparing antipsychotics and then some that very typically cause hyperprolactinemia, peliperidone, the metabolite of risperidone, risperidone itself, and all the first-generation antipsychotics reliably cause hyperprolactinemia, peliperidone is probably the worst offender. Then you have in the middle olanzapine, lorazidone, and sunapine and ciprazidone, which may or may not cause some elevation and sometimes even only transiently. And then you have iloperidone, quetiapine, cosepine, eripiprazole, and other partial agonists who usually do not cause hyperprolactinemia. Eripiprazole, specifically if you add it to an antipsychotic, will actually reliably lower prolactin levels. The key points, all antipsychotics can have sexual side effects, which is a major cause of drug discontinuation in young people. It is in part due to prolactin elevation, which can also cause galacteria. Dopamine blockade in the tuberal infundibular system can cause prolactin elevation. The degree of prolactin elevation varies between antipsychotics, with tight dopamine blockade being somewhat predictive. The best management, if possible, is switching to a prolactin-sparing antipsychotic, like the third-generation antipsychotics. If switching is not possible, added eripiprazole will reliably lower prolactin levels.